How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the more exciting discoveries coming out of James Webb Space Telescope in regards to supernova that it's actually been able to see so far in a lot of different locations in the universe. With some of the results and discoveries so far actually being kind of exciting and very unexpected. And here I wanted to start with one of the most recent images released by the scientists, whose paper you can find in the description, that you can basically see right here. And every single dot you see, that's an individual supernova discovered in this image. And this by itself is actually both unexpected and very exciting. Because basically by looking at a tiny tiny piece of the night skies, James Webb was able to identify 80 individual supernova visible in a variety of locations going back in time when the universe was only about 2 billion years old. And so the light from the supernova by itself was somewhat unexpected. As a matter of fact, prior to the James Webb, only a handful of supernova have been found at very far away distances of a redshift of above 2. Yet here we have this image where quite a lot of supernova are present even when the universe was much much younger and at much farther away distances. But I guess the question is, ok, but how exactly did they find these? Because honestly, just by looking at these images, it's practically impossible to tell the galaxy apart and so how do you even tell apart a supernova in this galaxy? And here the strategy was pretty simple. The team behind the study compared multiple images from the same spot taken approximately one year apart. And here by looking at individual images, they were able to establish tiny minute changes in brightness. Which basically meant that something here must have happened in order to produce what's known as a transient. Transients are usually variations in brightness and are most often various supernova. And so by looking at changes in brightness in several images, they identified individual locations. Which now meant that they had to zoom in to each of them to see what's happening. And by doing this with 79 objects, they discovered that pretty much all of them contained a supernova somewhere. Here's actually one of the most distant ones at the redshift of 2.84, with the farthest one being at redshift of 3.6. And most of these are basically what's known as the core collapse supernova, essentially a massive star reaching its limits and exploding leaving behind a neutron star or a black hole. But at least one of them was a type 1 supernova or essentially an explosion of a white dwarf. And these are actually exciting for a different reason, because today they're often used as what's known as a distance candle. Type 1a supernova are able to produce pretty much the same brightness overall, which means that by looking at them at different locations, we can then estimate the distance to these objects. And here the scientists wanted to answer one question. Do type 1a supernova look different in the ancient universe? And specifically, does the brightness change with the redshift? And right now the answer seems to be no, suggesting that the type 1a supernova potentially remained very similar in the last 10 billion years. Which implies that maybe we could use them as various distant scandals in even ancient universe after all. At the same time, the scientists actually want to compare these supernova to see if there are any elemental differences as well, because some of the more ancient stars are expected to be a lot more primitive in terms of elements. And so basically the next step here is to try to find out if the supernova that happened 10 billion years ago are going to be similar to the ones that happened approximately 2 billion years ago. Right now there is no answer yet, but that's basically the next step. And so here by comparing the results from these supernova to the ones from for example nearby SN1987A, the scientists are hoping to find a way to understand star formation and the evolution of early stars compared to the stars today. But I guess more excitingly, it's really the sheer number that's really surprising. Because James Webb is so sensitive, it was able to see so many supernova in such a tiny tiny part of night skies. For example, in terms of the actual area in a night skies, this is only about 6 arc minutes across. Or approximately 0.008 square degrees of the night skies, which is really really tiny when you compare this to the entire surface of the night skies as visible from planet Earth. It's actually this number. And that means that inside the 41,000 square degrees, you're going to have a lot of these tiny pieces, each of them very likely containing just as many supernova. And so just for fun, I tried to do the math here. And yeah, if somehow James Webb was able to see pretty much the entire universe using the same technique as in this study, we would very likely discover approximately 414,946,710 supernova out there. 
basically all visible somewhere in the night skies at all times. And though obviously some locations and some galaxies are going to be producing more over time, some other ones, like the Milky Way, generally don't have as many, and so those locations will have less. But yeah, that is a pretty big number. Over 400 million different supernova are probably visible from planet Earth right now at this moment. And that's to the James Webb Space Telescope. It's quite likely that there are even more at the outskirts of the universe that are even too difficult to detect for the James Webb. Nevertheless, these are some really important steps in order to try to understand how the universe evolved and to basically start serving these really important phenomena. The next step for some of these studies is to try to look back even more, possibly going back 12 billion years by focusing on certain regions a little bit longer. But when it comes to observing supernova, James Webb also made a few more unusual discoveries and the discoveries that can actually help us understand the universe in a different way. Here, by observing various galactic clusters that produce powerful gravitational lensing effects, scientists are hoping to solve the mysteries of dark matter and dark energy, and specifically discover an exact value for the so-called Hubble constant. And that's because James Webb now discovered several multiply lensed supernova. For example, in this gravitationally lensed image, in a galaxy cluster known as RX J2129, 3.2 billion light years away from planet Earth, the researchers discovered a triply lensed Type 1a supernova that first appeared 320 days later and then appeared again a thousand days later. And that's because in this case, the light from the supernova is bent in such a way that the distorted light rays arrive to planet Earth at different times, which both allows us to calculate the mass inside of this cluster, but also allows us to find out the overall rate of the expansion of the universe. You can actually learn about some of the previous examples in one of the videos in the description. And so because of the gravitational lensing, the supernova known as AT2002RIV has now been observed three times, giving us at least one more data point in order to figure out how fast the universe is expanding. But interestingly, approximately a month before this, in a completely different location, produced by a different gravitational lens, in this case this is a galaxy cluster known as G165, researchers observed another triple supernova, in this case producing even stronger light, and thus technically providing us with even better data. And so here, by observing the supernova appear at different times, we're essentially getting a lot of confirmations for various cosmological theories, including ideas behind dark matter and, of course, the ideas behind dark energy. It's practically impossible to explain this unless both dark matter and dark energy were actually real. For example, without the dark matter, the lensing effects would be much, much weaker and would not be producing this. Likewise, without dark energy, the light would be arriving at very different times, specifically with much shorter periods. But I think one of the most extreme examples, once again from the James Webb, is the multiply lens supernova you see right here. This is a galaxy known as MRG M0138, and this was a multiply lens supernova originally discovered by the Hubble in 2016. Back then, the supernova produced three separate events, as you can see in this image. And because this was approximately 10 billion light years away from us, this was already pretty exciting. Basically, here it meant the light traveled for a very long time, and thus the dark energy influenced it quite a lot. And this was also a type 1a supernova, meaning that the distances here can be actually measured very precisely. But now, completely by accident and very unexpectedly, James Webb detected two more lenses, but from what seems to be another type 1a supernova. This is not the same event, but it is an event that's producing two lenses already, and the third lens is expected in 2035. And so this is actually the first time ever scientists discovered two separate supernova from the same lensed object, both discovered by two iconic telescopes in two different frequencies, approximately seven years apart. And so this right here is one of the biggest discoveries when it comes to lens supernova, and of course when it comes to dark energy studies. And so now we just have to wait until someone comes up with an actual study, combining all of this data and working out the Hubble constant, and even discovering a few more things about dark matter in the process. Interestingly, at least one of these supernova has now been nicknamed Supernova Hope, although technically it's H0, which stands for Hubble constant. And the reason the scientists are referring to this as hope is because these studies can finally help us understand the Hubble constant scientifically and possibly solve the mystery of the so-called Hubble tension. You can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. And so, in a nutshell, 
quite a lot of incredible discoveries when it comes to supernova coming out of this incredible telescope after just two years. And that means that in the next two years, we're going to have so much more to discuss and there are going to be so many more incredible discoveries. As a matter of fact, since this mission still has like 18 years to go, I'm sure there's going to be so much more we're going to find. But until these future discoveries, check out some of the previous discoveries and really important discoveries by the James Webb in one of the videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.